Hi friends, today in this video lecture, I am going to talk about Anglo-Norman period or Middle English period. Anglo-Norman period is basically which started from 1066 AD. That is, Norman is basically a French dialect. Okay, so you can say that it is a Anglo-Norman period or Anglo-French period. Both of it means the same. So actually, Norman conquest happened in 1066 AD, which divided English period into two parts. Anglo-Saxons which was before before 1066 AD and Anglo-French which was after 1066 AD okay what is Norman conquest basically Norman conquest happened in 1066 AD where King Harold of England who was uh, ruling England during that period and he was defeated by William the Conqueror who was a French ruler this French ruler William the Conqueror became the ruler of England. France became the ruling power of England and this ruling power started in 1066. French speaking ruling caste was established. French influenced both vocabulary and pronunciation of England and English of that matter Anglo-French became the language of aristocrats while Anglo-Saxon remained the common man's language. So during this Middle English, uh, uh, Middle English period, English got vocabulary from both Anglo-Saxons as well as Anglo-French. After the Normans inverted in 1066 AD, they brought French linguistic influence to England. This language was called Norman French because uh, Norman was basically a dialect of French. So that is it is uh, so that is why it is a it is called the Norman French. Orally enough, uh, or the orally enough that the average person spoke Old English while the upper class spoke Norman French. Normal people are speak speaking Anglo Saxon or Old English while the upper class aristocratic society and the rulers were speaking Norman French. The two linguistic, uh, sorry, the two languages blended together to form Middle English, which is an in between language that bridged the development of our language from Old English to Early Modern English. Early Modern English started at the time of Chaucer, that is the Third Age. First comes Anglo-Norman, after that comes the Age of Chaucer. Uh, in between uh, Early Modern English and uh, Anglo-Norman, uh, there is the Age of Chaucer. So, between the Anglo-Saxon and the Early Modern English period, there is a period called Middle English period and which was influenced by the Norman French. Now let's talk about the Crusades. What is Crusades and how it is, how it helped in the revival of classical literature. In the 11th century, Holy Roman Empire was ruling all over Europe and the Pope who spreading the Christianity. So Pope called all the people who were Christians in Europe to fight against the Muslims to reclaim the Holy Land in the Near East. A holy war was fought during this time which is called Crusades. Okay, the Pope who called all the Christians who were living in Europe to fight against the Easterners that means the Muslims who rule in the East and in that fight we call that war, the holy war called Crusades and the people who fight in the Crusade war which is known as which is called them as Crusaders so and the people who went into the war was called Crusaders so when the Crusaders returned from East they brought with them manuscripts and texts that has been composed by the ancient Mediterranean societies and these included the works of ancient Greek and Roman philosophers scientists astronomers and mathematicians and now when these people came from East and they came into their countries in the West this period and this period helped in cross fertilization okay here i mean cross fertilization mean the cross fertilization of language which means the interaction or interchange as between two or more cultures 
field of activity or knowledge or or the like that uh, is mutually beneficial and productive because of this cross fertilization of language there arise two major things that is one is classical text and other is the birth of university so people started reading classical text on their own through this the birth of universities even though the war and bloodshed happens the belief of churches in the european countries didn't lost it arises into a wide range but they found corruption uh, in the church that, that means the uh, common people or the educated people they found corruption in the church and because of the corruption there arises the first step of reformation and the reformation started in 1400 now we discuss how the power of church lost now what happened was 400 AD or anglo-saxon period the nj europe was basically pagans which means they don't have any beliefs in god they don't believe in christianity but in the early stages 500 600 ad christianity spread across the europe and paganism was almost extinct by the time of middle english this gave church a lot of money and influence also at the same time uh, what happened was they started building larger and larger churches so catholicism became the dominant religion of western europe during anglo norman period so catholic nations were expected to follow the law of the land as well as the law of the pope also at the same time we notice that the church served as the basics of knowledge for most of the people many people who were not read and write at that time so they have to rely on the clergy for interpretation this gave church officials immense power over the ever increasing number of lay people after they started reading classical text they uh, there is a increase in number of literacy and growing accessibility to various type of text people now no longer want to completely rely on the church for answers now people who were only relying on the church they now started to look answer for another places so education which was res- reserved for clergy members was not controlled by the clergy themselves due to the accessibility of the new literary culture spread out the church and the secular school developed in the villages that was not under the supervision of church while the church lost the control over educational education people became more and more aware of the corruption within the church and this led to a call for the reformation against the church that had so much authority in the world there was a growing sense of uh, distrust among the people in regard to the church church clergy seemed to become corrupt while the clergy church grew wealthier and there arises uh, a new kind of religion that is protestant the second important thing that happened in middle english was the birth of university in this time town schools uh, were developed in these t- schools students were taught classical language and classical methods so teacher gave students classical education and they allowing students to reasoning and debates with with each other under the idea of ancient writers while education spread there were a growing number of scholars who became teachers now these teachers and other sort of workers like artists and craftsmen they all were started building guilds g u i l d s guilds are basically association of similar people from similar profession so they started building guilds to ensure quality and standardization so teachers and students also formed association to protect um, themselves and create their own standards these associations were known as universitals and as formalized charters were obtained to grant members privilege in protection universities were born Now let's look at the literary characteristics of the spirit. The first important thing that you must remember is that in the Middle English period or the Anglo-Norman period, uh, words order became very uniform. The uniformity of words. Second is standardized ways of spelling and forming sentences were happen in this time. Third one is the use of phonemes were started. Also there were so many different dialects on English which was spoken all over England and hence London became the standardized dialect. This time London dialect was the main standard dialect. 
also three cycles were mainly used basically three cycles are kinds of stories or tales was very prominent during this time oh, the main uh, the name of main cycles were the matter of britain the matter of france and the matter of rome most of the stories written in matter of rome about the king alfred and the legends of this times okay the matter of rome also included what is referred to as the matter of troy consisting of romances and other texts based on the trojan war and its after effects the matter of france also known as the carolingian cycle together with the matter of britain which concerned king arthur and the matter of rome comprising the material derived from uh, and inspired by classical mythology it was one of the great literary cycles the three cycles most prominent themes were the adventures and the about uh, the pursuit of courtly romance or love and about knightly exploit knightly exploit which is uh, the qualities of the knight so the three cycles and the most prominent themes were adventures courtly romance and the qualities of the knights these were the things we mainly want to remember in anglo roman period so that's it guys happy learning stay safe and stay tuned to keynotes